Welcome to Berkeley's Dog 5 News. Fox is so overrated. I'm Caitlin. And I'm Zoe. Today we will be discussing Mesoamerican societies, South American societies, and Oceania. The first society we're going to be talking about in Mesoamerica are the Omlex. The Omlex people, also known as the rubber people, were well known for their agricultural experimentation. They grew beans, chili peppers, avocados, squashes, gourds, and the most famous and widespread thing, maize. All these foods had spread throughout Mesoamerica, which caused more agricultural surpluses. This cultivation of the different foods made the Olmecs very significant of Mesoamerica by introducing them. The Olmecs had passed down agriculture as well as the ideas of calendar, writing, and ceremonial centers. And now over to Rachel and Chichen Itza. Hey guys, I'm Rachel. Currently, I'm filming in the middle of a bush because we didn't have the money and the budget to send me to Chichen Itza, so we're going to do it from here. Basically, we're going to be talking about Chichen Itza. Chichen Itza is a prominent city in the Mayan society. The thing that makes Mayan society so significant is a calendar that they have made. The calendar was created and was very important since it almost completely and correctly predicted the solar year. It was only off about 17 seconds. The reason the calendar is so important is because it helped predict when good times for farming and agriculture was. The Mayans had made significance from this calendar that was created showing their astronomy and mathematics through this cal calendar helped agriculture. The Mayan also had a ritual sacrifice to bring rain from <laughs> to the land from the production of agriculture surplus. The Mayan also built ceremonial centers with the religious temples that became an influential part and even became cities. They had theoretic government providing that religion was a huge part of the Mayan life. They were decentralized as they had many different city-states. The Maya society also structure consisted of the elites, rulers, priests, and even merchants who were part of the royal family, the craftsmen and artisans, the commoners and the peasants, and the slaves on the bottom. Now, back to the newsroom. May spread from Mesoamerica to South America inspired the Chavin cult, a religious cult centered around maize. Copper, gold, and silver metallurgy spread from Andean society to Mesoamerica, which probably inspired Mayan tools, weapons, and jewelry. And now, over to Dion for our weather report. Up here in the Mesoamerica area, where the Mayan and Olmecs resided, it's raining. These societies need rain for agriculture, as they are not a river valley-based societies. Because of the rain, they had no need for large irrigation systems. There is something surprising that went down in South America, 8,000 BCE to be exact. There is a climate change, which will eventually affect many Indian societies, including the Chavin and Mochica. The climate became warmer, drier, causing food supply to dwindle significantly. The hunter and gather people needed to have a stable food supply so they developed agriculture in the region. Now we will go to David with an interview with Mr. Joe Gappy, a biology and environmental science teacher at the home. Thanks, Dion. I'm here with Mr. Gappy, asking him about his opinions on climate change. Mr. Gappy, your opinions? Well, uh, due to the climate actually getting warmer, um, we're having some problems. Some potential habitat destruction is occurring. As the earth gets warmer, areas where organisms like to live will actually change. The changing climate will dictate the plant life, the food available for these organisms. That will all change, which means organisms will actually have to drift and go away from the equatorial regions, which are the warmer parts of the earth, which means they will be heading north and south towards more cooler areas on the globe. We will see a shift in life on the planet. Not to mention, we will have our polar ice caps melting, our oceans will rise, storms will increase, weather will change, and our coastlines will be altered like you can't imagine. How does that sound? That sounds very important. Thank you. Thank you for taking your time. Have class. a good day, guys. The weather affected these societies profoundly as the rain changed agriculture in Mesoamerica. And the climate change in South America forced hunters and gatherers to resort to agriculture. Now back to Zoe and Caitlin in the newsroom, explaining Andean societies. Thank you, Dion. A prominent society in the Andes region is the Shavin, who are famed for a religious cult. The Shavin cult was a religious cult made by the Shavin society. It was a significant as it showed how maize was prized in the Andes region, so much so that even a religious cult was centered around it. Ceremonial centers were built in Peru as a result of this religious cult. Another significant society in the Andean region is the Mochica Society. Mochica Society was famed for its art and ceramics. These ceramics are important since they, they are created based off of the everyday life. They help us uncover many things about their society and how it was ran. 
and gave us information about their society and many other Andean societies that are able to be read and articulated. Andean societies had a significant economic trade system. Different goods would come from highlands, valleys, and coasts and be distributed among the different regions. Potatoes and wool came from the highlands, squash and beans and maize came from the valleys, and fish, cotton, and sweet potatoes came from the coast. Because of the environment, the mountains and valleys, and the Andean society, it was hard for any huge empires or political powers to emerge. And it was hard for cities to communicate with one another. Now to Dion to explain the Austronesian migration. Good evening, I am David Vitaskovic, doing tonight's Migration Mayhem Map. And I'm uh, filling in for poor Dion, who was sacrificed in T-Call earlier today. So, let's get started. The Austronesian migrations and the Indo-European migrations were both similar and different relating to their interaction with the environment. They were similar in that something influenced by their environment allowed them to spread long distances. The difference is that the Indo-Europeans used horses in their migrations and they migrated over land. The Austronesians used outrigger canoes, and as you can tell, they migrated over water. Now over to myself in Hawaii. Aloha! I'm here in Hawaii where chickens run rampant and they cook pigs whole for 24 hours in a pit to talk to you about the Austronesians and their society. They migrated to various islands as Dion, not Dion, he was just sacrificed as I just mentioned, and they migrated with the aid of outrigger canoes. They spread agriculture to the islands to settle to and their language. They grew taro, yams, and breadfruit, and they domesticated pigs and chickens. The Austronesians had sheepdoms on the islands they settled on. In Hawaii, commoners were not allowed to look at their chief directly, as they were considered divine or semi-divine. From 1500 BCE to 500 BCE, the Lapita Society were a series of islands that traded with each other. But when the islands became independent and had everything they needed, the Lapita Society dissolved. That is it from Hawaii. I'm going to a luau. Aloha. That concludes our news on Mesoamerican societies, South American societies, and Oceania. Be sure to tune back at 10 for some post election drama. The cultiv cultiv cultivation of all the different Drama. Bye! Hasta luego. Hasta pronto. Stop! <laughs> See you later! <laughs>